can we start now, Mark? Jeez. Go on then. Ugh. Hey guys, and welcome to Ask Mark number 44. Welcome back. We have had a two week hiatus because we are selfish and we are taking all we took some time off. Um, <laughs> if you're noticing. How dare we? How, <laughs> how dare we? Um, things might look a little bit different. Um, that's because in my week off, I went from my horrible mid room, it's not even really a room, hallway where I got depressed all day because it's horrible, <laughs> and I moved my camera downstairs. Uh, hence why we have green screen. So, because I'm green screen, you guys and girls at home can pick whatever goes on behind me. So each week I will have a different <laughs> different scene, um, and it's going to be based on your requests. So get your requests down below. But the first one, I'm going to give it to Mark. So Mark... What would you like my backdrop to be for this episode of Ask Mark? It could be anything, um, as long as it's I'm, clean I'm, and PC. Yeah, I'm thinking dinosaurs. Um, All right. I don't really know why. I've got like Jurassic World, Jurassic Park kind of in the background. Just, just some, like grazing dinosaurs or something. Grazing dinosaurs. <laughs> I will do my best. Okay, I'll do my best. So future Sean, good, good luck with grazing dinosaurs. I'm going to change it. Three, yeah. two, one. Boom, there we go. Grazing dinosaurs, hopefully. <laughs> or an episode of The Dinosaurs, if I can get away with that. <laughs> if we copyright, I guess there's no audio or anything. I might be able to get away with it. Anyway, there's something to do with dinosaurs behind me. Um, how are you, Mark? Did you have a nice week off? Do you feel nice and relaxed yeah. and refreshed? Yeah, yeah, kind of chilled out. Yeah, just went on a sort of walking holiday in the countryside with the dogs Lovely. and the missus. Um yeah, yeah, no, I came back and nothing was on fire, which is nice. Uh, everything yes. was going sort of quite smoothly. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Good. Good. Yes, yes. Good. Back and ready. Ready to talk about scuba diving, answer questions and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <It's> exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, let's get straight into the questions. So the first mm -hmm. question is from Sean. He says, hi, Mark. What about Sean? Thank you, mate. No offence. <laughs> Sean's here too. And I'm here too. Uh, anyway, Sean says, I just want to ask your advice. Well, that's good because uh -huh. that's what this show's all about. Uh, we I do here. Yes. I currently use the Aqualung Fusion undersuit and I'm considering changing mm -hmm. it to the BX400. I wanted to ask, yep. is, uh, is this less bulky and how do they compare regarding their thermal ratings? Thanks. Uh, it's probably a little bulkier. Um, so we've got the Aqualong Fusion um, undersuit. I don't think it has any fancy numbers or letters after it. It's just the Fusion undersuit. It's got that uh, sort of U-shaped zipper to go with the, the Fusion dry suit that they bought from Whites. Um, the Santi BZ400X, that's the undersuit that I actually use at the moment. Um, I think it's a little bit thicker. Uh, not a great deal thicker, but a little bit thicker than the, uh, the Fusion. Um, as far as temperature-wise, and it's actually rated, uh, I think it's between like nine degrees Celsius and zero, uh, so freezing, uh, mm -hmm. so really pretty cold temperatures. Um, I can't remember the coldest I've ever taken it, but certainly below 10. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit thicker, but it is nice and uh, nice and warm. It's uh, it's very practical as well. I can't remember on the Fusion. Uh, you'd have to check out the uh, the product review on that, uh, which I'm sure I'm sure will will link up in the uh, in the corner. Um. Stop <laughs> giving me extra work. I've got a timestamp that now. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, but yeah, so um, so I can't remember how many pockets that has, but the uh, the BZ400X um, definitely has pockets, and uh, it even has internal braces as well. But for a um, uh, a warm warm undersuit designed for real sort of cold water or extended diving, um, it's not particularly bulky. You tend to get those uh, sort of big, heavy, quilted uh, sort of dry suit undersuits. But they in turn, they because they're adding that extra insulation, it just makes you super buoyant. So you have to add lead. But going from the Fusion to the BZ400X. You might have to add a little, but it wouldn't be too much. Um, but yeah, I, I love the uh, the BZ400X. It's it's a clever undersuit. Um, well, it's, all the little it's details got a around it. That's amazing. It has it has it has advanced uh, education. Um, wow. But like in inside the arm 
uh, elbow pit, whatever you call it, uh, thinner material. That. Underneath the um, your armpit, it's a thinner, stretchy material, so you can stretch and reach. Um, just lots of clever little details, and um, I, I wear mine quite a lot um, just around the house in the winter time, just to save on um, sort of heating bills. Um, it's it's just a it's a sleeping bag shaped like a person, Wicked. and they do come in. Um, I mean, Santi have what, like 26 different sizes. Um, you get like small, <laughs> medium, and large, but you get like uh, short, medium, and medium, tall, and there's LLL, which is uh, a large, long, longer. So if you're quite tall and skinny, um, it's kind of perfect for that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit thicker, it is warmer. Um, It'll it'll still work with uh, with a fusion dry suit if you're still using a uh, fusion dry suit, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's just a little bit thicker, but it is uh, it is a bit warmer as well. Nice. So guys, what I established from that is Mark has a dry suit undersuit fetish. Um, so <laughs> rather than latex, he likes to wear his dry suit undersuit. I do. It just. Yeah, I mean, I if it's not particularly warm, then I'll put. I've got a uh, fourth element. Oh, what do they call it? Is it the X Core um, vest? That's quite a nice vest to uh, sort of wear around, and you can wear that out uh, out to town. Um, if it's not particularly and only cold, that, I'll put else. my. I'll put my fourth element Arctic on because um, I've got the two piece. So you just put the top on, um, and um, and yeah, if it's. If it's a little bit colder than that, then I've got the, um, oh, I can't remember what they called it. Fourth Elements. Um, it didn't last very long. Well, that's good, oh, isn't it? There was separate, yeah, yeah. It, it was, this was just before the uh, the Halo 3D. They had a jacket and then separate salopettes. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Is but that the one that the um, caught on fire when it reacted with air? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, disclaimer often, that is not real I was just making that up <laughs> quite often in the uh, in the winter time I'll wear that as um, as sort of bottoms just as trousers uh, just with like a short uh, a shirt over the top and a jacket and, uh, and I'll sort of wear that out and about but that's quite good to keep like your core warm and your legs um, but then if you're just at home you're not going out you don't mind just wearing this uh, sort of quilted onesie um yeah bz400x all day long there we go guys so if you have a quilted <laughs> actually follow us on instagram and what, what send your oh, pictures no. to us mm. put your uh, put your undersuit on doing a daily activity <laughs> whether that's playing video games doing some washing up hanging in the washing doing some ironing send us your pictures and we'll use the hashtag uh Every day is an undersuit day. No, that's too long. I'll think no, of a hashtag no. before the end of the show. Yeah. We'll think of something and let us know. <laughs> use use this hashtag here. Yeah, um. this one right there. <laughs> cool. Wicked. <laughs> Future Sean, sort that out. Thank you very that's, much. That's Future Sean's problem. <clears throat> that is. So question number two is from Ibram. Uh, he says, hi, mm -hmm. Mark. Cheers, mate. Uh, I decided to shift fr uh, from back mounts to side mounts. Which BCD okay. do you recommend? Hollis SMS one hundred or the X Deep Stealth? Uh, stealth all day. Um, the I actually have a um, a, a part the, the bladder of the uh, the SMS one hundred. Um, I got that when it like first came out when side mount was first becoming a. Um, Sort of a recreational thing, um, but it's not really designed for the the modern style of diving. Whereas the the stealth is what most sideman divers are using nowadays. I think um, Ahmed Gabba actually wore a stealth harness uh, when he was doing his uh, his world record attempt. So mm. it's it's pretty darn good and. It's yeah, one size fits all. You can completely customize it and uh, and really make it comfortable and practical for you. Um, yeah, it, it's it's more it's much more better than much the, more uh, the SMS one hundred. Yeah, <laughs> in it, bro. Um, yeah, um, the so they do two different or they do three different versions. They do the um, they do the classic, the rec, and the tech. Classic just has that small 
a compact little bladder that just kind of sits in the small of your back. Um, that's quite good if you're going for quite light. Um, you want something really kind of stripped down, nice and uh, nice and compact. The Rec and the Tech, they have the same wing or the same bladder, which is a bit more trapezoidal, uh, kind of like a diamond. Well, that's same a wing word. on the back. Trapezoidal. <laughs> Trapezoidal. Um, uh, but the, the harness is different. The rec version will have pinch clips and quick adjust so you can get in and out of it a bit more like a recreational BCD. The tech is, it's not a one piece harness because it's all separate bits and bobs and hardware in the middle, but it's, it's a bit more fixed. So once you get it to the perfect size and, uh, and dimensions for you, boom, that's it. You just have to get nice. in and out of it. Um, but yeah, choosing between the uh, the SMS 100, which I don't think they make anymore. Um, I think they discontinued that a while back. Right, it's uh, 101. Stealth. Mm. Um, I I go down the um, uh, the stealth. I mean the the modern equivalents. The Hollis is the Katana two. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but you also have the uh, the Apex uh, S. You had uh, to get w Apex WSX. in there, didn't you? Jeez. Yeah, I do. Have, haven't even gotten onto a shear watch or a Terek yet. But oh, the, um, yeah, get a Terek. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh, what is it? The the WSX forty five. They do a twenty five and a forty five. Yeah, I think so. Uh, which is similar. Right. Yeah, similar to the uh, to the Stealth, uh, but it's just the Apex version basically. Um, but yeah, I I try and head down that road instead of the uh, the one hundred because um, that's a it's a little outdated. Cool. There we go. Excellent. Hope that helps you out, mate. So, mm -hmm. question number three is from Christopher. Uh, he mm -hmm. says, Please help me understand why some mask lenses are designed for protection against sun rays. The time on the water pre and post dive is usually not that long. When I go scuba diving, I go, I go underwater, under the water, usually face down away from the sun. What am I missing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm sell to think more of a... masks, mate. That's the question. <laughs> That's the answer. There we go. Yeah. You're um, welcome. I, I, I'm trying to think of a um, an analogy, but I can't at the moment. But they, you, you do, even if you are just jump in the water, negative entry, boom, straight sort of around, you're, you're still exposing yourself to, uh, to sort of UV rays. And especially on the surface, you've got a lot of the reflections of the sun. So whilst you're on the surface waiting for the boat to pick you up or surface swim back to your exit point, you're still being exposed. And when you're under the water as well, same thing's still happening. Um, it's only in like the, the final few sort of meters uh, at the end of the dive, but you're still getting a lot of those UV rays. They're still coming in and it, you, you just got to protect your eyes um, because you're very exposed out there and you, you you don't have sunglasses. So that is the sort of uh, equivalent. Not all of them are specifically for UV. Some of them, they'll have like a gold or silver mirrored finish or that kind of rose tinting to, uh, to sort of compensate. Some of them, they're made to increase the contrast. Uh, some are designed to bring back the reds into uh, the water. So what you're seeing is a bit more what it's actually like if you shone a light on it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the UV ones, even if it is sort of protecting you for uh, it's like 10 minutes either side, it's still protecting you more than just a single piece of glass. So it's not it's not an essential thing. It obviously depends where you are. If you're working in and around the tropics, uh, then yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. You, you, you need to protect your eyes because your eyes, I think, can actually get sunburn. Um, so Ugh. yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like uh, sort of snow blindness with um, uh, sort of Sean's speciality, your, your snowboarding uh, goggles yeah. or whatever you call them. They're, they'll all have like UV protection and whatnot because the sun, granted, you're not just staring up at the sun, but it's reflecting off this white surface yeah, and it's still damaging your eyes. So it's it's similar to, to a lesser degree with water. But yeah, if, if you spend any time on the surface, you've got the sun above you, it's reflecting beneath you. So you are quite exposed and it's every little helps. Um, yeah. yeah, if you can sort of protect your eyes, then yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it in the long run. Definitely. And like you say, it all depends on 
how you dive, where you dive, just because, you know, Christopher, it's not ideal for you. That's fine, but there's going to be people that yeah. are on the surface for a long amount of time, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. visually they might want a filter in their mask lens to help them see further down. So it's mm. better to have these products so then someone might be able to use them rather than not having them at all. So it's nice. It's basically yeah. it's just nice to have that selection, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. It's... And let's be honest as well, you want to look cool. That's 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 the thing, isn't it? If you can have one of those mask lenses, like the lenses with the red tint or something, and the orange, like the burnt orange tint, it's oh yeah, you look you look, but cool. not, but not if you're looking to become a professional diver because students that's true. need to be able to see your eyes. Um, oh. It's um, it's kind of creepy as a as a, like a panicking student. You turn to your instructor or your dive master, and all you just see is your own reflection of yourself panicking. No, that's that's just going to make things worse. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about becoming an instructor or a uh, dive master, avoid mirrored lenses. Um, it it won't do you any favors. There we go. <laughs> Sound advice. Also, you're a party pooper because you got to look cool. Anyway. <laughs> What are your thoughts about lenses, guys and girls? Do you have a particular style lens or a filtered lens? Does it uh, does it help you? Let us know in the comments below, please. That would be awesome. Anyway, question number four is from Scuba Crow. Uh, you win today's award of coolest username. Well done. Well done. Caw -caw. Caw -caw. <coughs> anyway, Scuba Crow says, Hi, Mark. Poor... <laughs> It's always our home you're, mark. You're, you're, you're getting never... ignored today, aren't you, sure? Mate, massively, massively getting ignored. <laughs> but that's fine. It's fine. The show is called Ask Mark. It's not called Ask Mark. He, ne Sean. he never mentions it after the show. So, yeah, don't don't worry too yeah, much. Don't, yeah. <laughs> it's only a joke, guys. I don't mean it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, Scoob Crow says, Hi, Mark. Uh -huh. Can you make a comparison between the Santi Heated Undersuit Flex 2.0 and the Santi mm -hmm. Undersuit BZ400X, please? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Wicked. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can we can do a specific video on that. Uh, so the, the, the Flex 2.0 is just the vest. Um, so the vest itself has uh, so the heating coils running through it and the front and the back. Um, but the BZ400 Extreme, uh, which is the heated version, is the same as the, uh, the BZ400X, but it has heating coils over the chest, over the backs, over your arms uh, and your thighs. I think the only thing that doesn't have it is like your lower leg. Um, so similar heating. But the um, but the vest I think is a lot thinner. Um, with the BZ400 Extreme, you can wear that without the battery, and that's the same as the BZ400X. It's it's that same sort of warmth rating. But then, if you want to, you can connect the battery, and then you have that sort of external heating as well. With the vest, the vest isn't particularly thick. Um, I think it's like 180 grams. Uh, a meter squared or whatever it is <clears throat> so it's it'll help if you just sort of wear it as an additional vest but sort of wearing it by itself it's not going to be sort of as warm so it's a much thinner material um but clever um and also it means that you don't need as big of a battery the full suit requires quite a hefty battery to be, uh, to be able to get that amount of power sort of into the suit. But the uh, the vest itself, you can just use the uh, the, the tiny little uh, six amp hour battery, and that will get you a good I think it's like hour and a half um, sort of power just <clears throat> just out of that. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. But of course, you can wear it underneath or over the top of uh, sort of any existing undersuit uh, as long as you have like a thermovalve or the connector fitted to your dry suit yeah you can just wear the vest um, sort of however and whenever you want but with the um, <clears throat> the full body suit yeah it's kind of the full body suit um, mm. so yeah cool. but Warms your core up, that's the most important thing. Um, keep your bodily organs functioning properly. Um, of course, do be aware of, uh, sort of any decompression complications because as you're like warming up your body, uh, of course you're speeding up your decompression or your on-gassing as well. So uh, you do need to take that uh, sort of into account. But, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll look to um, 
uh, to do a, a, a direct comparison between the two um, as a yeah. sort of separate video. But yeah, the, um, the external heating, um, it, it is nice to have it down the arms and the legs as well. But if you're just looking for a little sort of extra boost, um, then yeah, the vest is perfectly fine. Cool. What they need to do, yeah, mm. is they need to have a diving catheter. Yeah, so when you go for a wee, it, exists. it yep. goes in yep. the tube <clears throat> and then that goes around oh, okay. the suit and then it warms you up. So your own wee keeps you nice and warm. It, it would do better on the inside of your body. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we, we do have, like, catheters for um, for diving, but it's just, more to just, just get just, rid just of a, it. Just a um, thought. Get rid just, of it, just but tube it up. And then, <laughs> when you get off the boat, you like there's a, guy you, there's a person that you don't like, and you just unload it, and <laughs> that's the child childish in me. Child, yeah, child yeah, I've, me. I have too many stories um, that I've heard from commercial divers about that that we won't get into. <clears throat> okay, yes, that will be that that will be uh, <laughs> that will be a Christmas special, maybe commercial diving <laughs> stories, naughty, <laughs> dirty <laughs> <laughs> stories. <laughs> Swiftly moving on to question number five. So this is from Lu Tong. I'm going to say that Lu Tong. Mm -hmm. Now Lu Tong, I do apologise. I've had to hack up your question. Well, it was more of a question. There was a bit of an essay there because obviously I can't remember what video it was, but basically he has the same. So is it side mount setup as you or something like that? Or oh, he the, has the, the same back plate and wing. Yeah, that's the it. He has the same this, setup as you, and like he goes on <clears> about <throat> there's about a paragraph and a bit before he gets into the question. Um, yeah, cool that thing. Anyway, so, sorry, I've, I've abbreviated it, but let's just get into it. It goes, I have a question about diving a tire. I wore board mm -hmm. shorts and a rush guard, um, and I can mm -hmm. descend and ascend safety stops successfully without wearing any weights. Uh, goes on to his question. What cool. if I add a five mil wetsuit slash vest to keep me warmer? Will my buoyancy affect that uh, uh, that I need uh, to wear weight? My ultimate setup is without any lead slash weights on me when I dive, uh, and the current setup is perfect. Any thoughts if the five mil wetsuit might ruin <coughs> my perfect setup? I'm going to go on a whim and say yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's yeah, it is yeah. a bit obvious. Yeah, so five mil wetsuits will add uh, sort of extra buoyancy to you, um, especially if it's neoprene. Uh, you can get some neoprene alternatives, uh, like sort of fourth element thermocline, um, the apex ceramic core. Um, they're or carbon core, I think it's called. <laughs> they're ceramic, neoprene alternatives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has. Um, oh, I think it has like ceramic weave or something. Some heat warmth special stuff cool. but then you've got plates buoyant. in it ceramic plates they've just lined it with <laughs> just, plates. Just, clunk, clunk. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Um, but yeah if you're if you're adding five mil neoprene yeah you're going to add uh, or you're going to need to add some um, some lead to compensate for that uh, that positive buoyancy to uh, sort of equalize that out yeah, I mean, a, a lot of divers, if you're sort of lean enough and your equipment is as uh, sort of neutrally or negatively buoyant, then yeah, you don't really need any leads to uh, to stay down. Uh, it's only sort of enough to compensate any sort of lungfuls of gas that you uh, that you have. But um, yeah, if you do add anything extra, if it's um, sort of extra pieces of equipment, if it's like a, a DSMB or something, you have to sort of try and work out the buoyancy of that even when it's deflated, because a lot of them tend to float. So you know, oh, okay, so I might need to add a little bit of um, sort of lead to compensate for that. If you're adding a full body five mil wetsuit, yeah, you're gonna need to add probably a couple of uh, sort of kilos or more to uh, to compensate for that, because they do float. Um, it's basically a foam material just full of bubbles. So yeah, you can need some lead to, uh, to compensate for that. But yeah. the easiest thing to do is just do a, uh, a check dive or a buoyancy check right at the beginning of the uh, of the dive. Put everything on, jump in the water um, with like a couple kilos of lead. If you can get down, great. If not, grab a couple uh, sort of extra from the uh, from the side of the boat, put them on, and uh, and just sort of work out exactly how much lead you need to uh, to get down. Yeah, cool. Or. I mean, this isn't safe, but if you really don't want weights, just hit the gym, mate. Get yourself a nice 10-pack and, like, proper beef yourself up. You want to look like The Rock. 
Yeah, muscle does not float. Um, yeah, that's why when you, yeah. you never see the rock in water because it all just goes into in <laughs> sucks in because he's just that buff. <clears throat> it, ha it happened to me in my in my younger days. <clears throat> Um, now, I can't actually That's... get in the water. I basically walk on water because I'm so chubby. I'm like, I'm That's why you don't to take a bath. In. Yeah, I can't. Because <laughs> you just think, yeah. oh, let me sort the dogs out. So there we go, guys. Weights. What are your thoughts on that? Are you lean like the rock? Do you not need any? Um, have you introduced anything where, yeah, you've had to alter your uh, your weight system? Let us know your process down below. So let's move swiftly on to the last question. And it's from Tin. One, two, four, four, five. And he says, hey, Mark. Oh. Hey, yeah. Sean. Got one. <laughs> yes. Did you get one? <laughs> I got one. Woo. <clears throat> uh, and he, uh, or he, or so, should I say they, they say, uh, no. thank you for all your reviews, unboxings, and responding to all our questions. And thank you for the amazing stuff that you are doing. You are welcome. welcome. You yeah, are that's welcome. What we do. That's what we do. That is why we're here. Uh, that's why we're here. If you didn't respond, if we hadn't have bought this community, we would probably not be working at Simply Scuba. So thank you for letting us keep our jobs for another year. Because it has been a year, hasn't it, Mark? Incidentally, yeah. we have we have been in the newer version of Simply Scuba for a year. So happy birthday, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, anyway, we're halfway that, through that like two year awkward period because isn't it in like British law? Um, if if once you've been at a company for two years, then they need a legitimate reason to sack oh, you. Um, no. I didn't know in, that. In, in, yeah, Mate, in the I first redact two every years, bad thing that can... I've ever said <laughs> <laughs> over the past year. I redact it. <laughs> Yeah, they. I don't think they need a legitimate or like a, a yeah a legitimate reason to sack someone. You, Great. They can literally turn around and just go right. It's it's not working out. Um, <laughs> goodbye. Um, but yeah, after two <laughs> years, then they need like a definitive. Yeah, he, here's like the evidence and here's all the warnings or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's something I learned, um, which is a little worrying. Great. <laughs> No, not worry. Not as if we're we're bad workers or anything. Yes. <laughs> no, we're very good. We are very good. Anyway, let's let's talk about the actual question that Tin asks. Uh, they say, Come "My on. question is that I've just bought my first fifteen litre tank, and I want to know the best way to transport the tank in the car um, on your lap whilst you're driving." Uh, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, between your just, legs. Yeah, between <laughs> your legs. Uh, should I just ratchet strap it or should I do something else? Thank you uh, and continue doing the awesome job that you do. Will do. Nice. I, I just destroy my table. Um, yeah, yeah, ratchet strap. You, you want to immobilize it as best you can because um, if, you're, if you're storing multiples, then try and like alternate it. We used to um, in in like the back of the van when we had all the students uh, sort of cylinders. Of course, student cylinders have boots on the bottom, so that makes it ever so slightly tapered um, when they're all laid down. So if you put them all sort of valves facing the same direction, then they, they end up sort of splaying out, and it is just a whole pain. And then they end up moving around. Um, a lone cylinder is what 20 something kilos of like steel that's just quite happily just rolling around. It'll destroy your car, it'll damage the valve. Um, every time you turn a corner, every time you sort of stop start, yeah, you, you want to immobilize it as much as possible. I use a, um, uh, one of these um, that I made. This is no. just like PVC piping and rope. You cannot make it. You have to buy the best divers one from our website, simplyscuba.com. Thank you. Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, you can also make them. Um, <laughs> and it's, it, yeah, it's basically PVC piping, a piece of uh, rope with some strategically um, tied knots in the center. And that just acts as a cradle. Um, so you put this down on the uh, on the deck or on the um, uh, the bottom of your boot. Cylinder goes in the centre. That helps to stop them from uh, sort of twisting and turning. But then use a, uh, a strap as well to uh, to really kind of hunker it down because e even with that 
you go around a corner, it's still gonna slide and go backwards and forwards when you brake and accelerate. So yeah, you really wanna wedge it into a corner, immobilize it so it doesn't twist and turn, um, and double check the um, sort of regulations where you are, because you might need that sort of green and or yellow diamond um, on the uh, to be sort of marked on your car, because you are transporting com uh, compressed gas, uh, and potentially nitrox as well. But yeah, ratchet straps, a lot of car boots nowadays, they actually have those anchor points, uh, little D-rings kind of in the corners where you can strap it down. Uh, if you don't, then just use as much sort of padding as you can uh, sort of create in your car to really sort of stop it from sliding. Um, if your boot's just a big open space, there's nowhere to really sort of lash it down. Put it in the um, uh, sort of behind the, sort of the drivers or the... Um, uh, behind the seats in that sort of footwell because again the, there's not as much sort of movement space for it but yeah you, you want to immobilize it as much as possible so it doesn't roll around um but yeah the, that's that's how i do it i um i sort of put that down first cylinders in um this is normally tank valves facing towards the back of the car just so it's easier to uh, sort of get it out and uh, and then yeah lashed together um, to really sort of hold them down in position so they don't move whatsoever and tie them down more than you think you do mm. um, because yeah momentum is incredible and they do work themselves free um, yeah cool well that's yeah. strange trans 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 transporting tanks is just fun uh, the number of times we've like turned a corner and you can hear this coming from the back of the uh, back of the van because yeah they they just they just move a little bit yeah. and then uh, one of the uh, one of the valves just kind of rolls and uh, and yeah it just opens up the valve so that you know you're going to have an empty tank by the time you get to where it is you're going um interesting well how comes then the last time we went to diving i had to go in the back and hold eight cylinders it was really awkward because i didn't and have any do... rope <laughs> yeah and i don't know why you were saying that it was tokyo drift day it was really annoying <sighs> i was in the back eight cylinders <laughs> so dangerous mark so dangerous and on that bombshell guys that, <laughs> that is our mark number 44 done and dusted um how do you transport yours i mean what Mark says is basically that it is the universal setup, isn't it, Mark? That's basically what most people do. Yeah, but yeah. You you can you can sort of fabricate yeah. uh, like proper cradles. I've seen some designs online where you get sort of wooden uh, sort of two part cradles, a bit like Ooh. the um, what do they call them? Like the stockade, where you have your arms um, sort of through a piece of wood. I wouldn't know, uh, mate. I've never been rust. stockaded. I never got veg wrong yeah. vegetables thrown at me. In, in the 1700s. Yeah. Um, kind of like <laughs> that, but for cylinders. And then the, the second part sort of clamps it down so they really cannot move. Mm. Um, if you have a, a pickup truck, then they sort of make them specifically for the width so there's no side-to-side -side movement. Either side of the wheelbase as well, so it can't go backwards and forwards. All that kind of stuff. But yeah, you really want to secure them so they don't move whatsoever. Um because they will do a lot of damage to your car and to the uh, to the valve itself. That they will. That they will. Cool. Mm -hmm. right. Like I said, got any of your tri yeah. tricks and tips? Let us know in the comments below. And that is the end. So I'm going to end it. So buy stuff from our website, simplyscuba.com. <laughs> That's number one. No. Um, Instagram.com. So we are working on our road to 6,000. Now, technically, as of recording... We have hit mm -hmm. that, so congratulations to us. <laughs> but the problem is, is that the Instagram followers are, are, are a fickle bunch. So even though we have hit the uh, over 6,000, tomorrow they could just all decide to unsubscribe. So I'm still going to be pushing it until we hit 6,000 and say 30 to 50. I'm still going to be pushing because that's a safe number where we actually are kind of officially over the 6,000. So if you want to get inspired when it comes to diving, um, if you want uh, an update on when one of, when one of our videos goes live 
on um on on youtube we now do stories when the video goes live just to remind you that head over to the other social media platform get out of this one and head over to our youtube channel uh yeah if you want to see what latest products have dropped on our website we all feature it over on our instagram page and what we try and do is 90 percent lifestyle and inspiration and 10 percent product so you're not just going to get bombarded with prop by this by this by this by this we are all about the community and inspiration here at simply scuba so yeah head over to there if you don't follow us hit that follow that would be amazing obviously we sell stuff so go buy all of the stuff everything <laughs> scuba diving related at simply scuba.com um obviously tis the season holidays coming up loved ones you want to buy a loved mm -hmm. one a gift for christmas for halloween i don't think we sell anything spooky a black mask yeah. <laughs> a black wetsuit um yeah so head over there and also as well there is a particular day coming up a particular friday as it's called um so if you want to see or grab yourself a bargain, at the bottom of our website, you can have, have an email sign up. So type in your email in there. You'll get a weekly email. We won't we won't bombard you with emails. You get a weekly email with offers, what's new. But again, when this specific Friday, I think it's called uh, Orange Friday. Orange Friday? No, Pink Friday. Um, once that happens, um, yeah, you'll, you'll be updated with any offers in that way as well. Uh, also, Teespring or spring should i say we have our yeah. own uh, online um profits for that and everything goes to us as a channel rather than the company itself so if again if you're after uh, a t-shirt a hoodie a mug stickers you'll find the link to our spring store at the bottom of every single simply scuba video so go check that out and if you use the promo code surface 15 you actually get 15 percent off that is right Surface 15, which is the code for our Surface Interval video, I'm actually mentioning in our oh. smart. But, you know, every little helps, as Tesco's likes to say. Um, copyright <laughs> Tesco's 2021, whatever. Um, <laughs> and that's it. No, Ask Mark, obviously, if you guys and girls have any questions for Ask Mark, just use the hashtag Ask Mark. We will hunt down your question and we will add it to the show. The reason why... Um, we use the hashtag Harsmark. It's, it's just basically easier for us to search for. In the search bar, we just type in Harsmark and wigwam, bam, your question is there. Um, yeah, because we get a lot of comments throughout the day. Um, so, yeah, just to clear it all up, that'd be great. So, yeah, if, again, if you do have a question, just use the hashtag Harsmark and type in your question there and start it. Maybe start it with, hey, Mark and Sean, maybe that might help. <laughs> Uh, is that it? I think I've said everything. Uh, yeah, right? that's basically it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a two minute foundation, but they don't really sponsor these videos. They sponsor um, the service intervals. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers. Yeah.